The next one we see is relative density. Whenever the word relative density comes or relative comes into picture, so relative means comparing with a standard value. So whenever we say anything is relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass, relative density, so that relative word indicates that we are comparing that particular physical quantity with a standard measurement. So here when I say relative density, I am comparing the density of any substance with a standard unit of some particular substance and that substance what we are taking as the base is water. This is because water has got a density. The density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. Because it is 1 gram per centimeter cube, so when I am taking the relationship, so when I am giving relative density, it is nothing but relative density is the density of substance density of substance upon density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. So that's why this value is 1. Yani kisi bhi chish pe, agar hum ratio mein niche 1 raega, toh kya raega? Oh, value becomes easy to calculate. That's the reason we take the density of the relative density of substance with respect to water because the water density is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So, relative density of a substance is the range defined as the ratio of density of the substance to the density of water. So, the density of substance upon density of water gives you the relative density of a substance and the symbol is Rd. Rd is relative density. Relative density is the, uh, so relative density of a substance is density of substance upon density of water. For example, density of iron is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube and that of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So accordingly, the relative density will be equal to 7.8 upon 1 is equal to 7.8. So, 7.8 is the relative density of iron. Now, since relative density hai aur ye ek ratio hai, yani yaha pe bhi gram per centimeter cube hai, yaha pe bhi gram per centimeter cube hai, to that cancels out. Hence, the relative density has no units. Relative, ratio, relative density being a ratio of two similar substances, that's why the units are cancelling out and it has no units. So we have over here that for example density of iron is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube and density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube and the relative density of iron is density of iron upon density of water is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube upon 1 gram per centimeter cube is equal to 7.8. But density of substance is the mass of 1 centimeter cube of that substance. Therefore, we can also express the relative density of substance as density of relative density of substance is mass of 1 centimeter cube of substance upon 1 mass of 1 centimeter cube of water. That is mass of V centimeter cube of substance upon mass of V centimeter cube of water is equal to mass of any volume of substance upon mass of same volume of water. Okay. So relative density, that's why we can say the relative density of a substance can be defined, also defined as the ratio of mass of any volume of substance to the mass of equal volume of water. For example, if we say that the relative density of 7.8 is iron is 7.8, we mean that a piece of iron of any volume has a mass 7.8 times more than that of equal volume of water. Clear? So, the it will be 7.8 times the equal volume of water. So, units of relative mass density Relative density is just a number, it has no units, it is a dimensionless quantity, it is a ratio of same quantities. So, relative density has no units.
ओके सो वी सो द रिलेटिव डेंसिटी का डेफिनेशन के हिसाब से यू गॉट टू मेजर थिंग्स वन इज डेंसिटी ऑफ सब्सटेंस अपॉन डेंसिटी ऑफ वॉटर और वी कैन से दैट मास ऑफ एनी वॉल्यूम ऑफ सब्सटेंस अपॉन मास ऑफ सेम वॉल्यूम ऑफ वॉटर ओके आर डी इज इक्वल टू मास ऑफ एनी वॉल्यूम ऑफ सब्सटेंस टू द रेशियो ऑफ मास ऑफ एनी वॉल्यूम ऑफ सब्सटेंस टू द सेम वॉल्यूम ऑफ वॉटर सो वी कैन हैव द मेजरमेंट ऑफ रिलेटिव डेंसिटी नाउ ओवर यर वॉट विल डू इज we are going to have a density bottle so that we know the volume of the of the liquid so we have over here relative density of liquid is measured by using a density bottle this can be understood by the following activity take a empty dry density bottle fill find its mass m1 using the beam balance so what we have is we are going to find out we are going to take a bottle that is a density bottle and find out the mass of the density bottle so m1 is mass of empty bottle now fill the bottle completely with water and insert the stopper extra water flows out through the holes in the stopper dry the outer surface of the blot with blotting paper and then measure the mass of the bottle again with a beam balance suppose the mass to be m2 so next we get is m2 which is mass of bottle With water. Okay, so what we got was mass. We have bottle filled with water. Find out the mass of that water with the bottle. Now empty the bottle and dry it. Fill the bottle again, giving a with a given liquid and insert the stopper. Again, the extra liquid flows out and uh, while overflow through the hole in the stopper, dry and measure the mass of the bottle again. Suppose the mass is M three. So again, it will be M three. Which will be mass of bottle with liquid. Okay, so what we did was, we took empty bottle of mass, then we took water, then we took mass, then we took dry, then we took liquid, then we took mass. So we have got three masses: M1, M2, M3. So first one, mass of the empty bottle, M1. Second one, mass of the empty bottle, M2. Third one, mass of the empty bottle, M3. So first one, mass of the empty bottle, M1. M, uh, water filled bottle is M2. and water plus liquid is m3 so mass of water mass water is equal to m2 minus m1 mass liquid is equal to m3 minus m1 okay mass of liquid is m3 minus m1 then the relative density will be what is it Mass of liquid substance. It is mass of any volume of substance upon mass of same volume of water. Here, mass of both water and liquid is the same, right? So, what we find over here, relative density is equal to mass of liquid. That is M three minus M one upon mass. of same volume of water same volume water is m2 minus m1 so that's why m3 minus m1 upon m2 minus m1 will give us the required relative density of the substance they are given example m1 is 25 m2 is 55 m3 is 49 so it will be 49 minus 25 upon 55 is 25 24 upon 30 is 0.8 Is the relative density of the liquid? Here we need to remember that there is no units. Relative density has no units. Do you know density bottles measures the relative density of the liquid? So that is what we understood. The density the bottle measures the relative density of the liquid. Since density of water is one gram per centimeter cube, so the density of substance is in gram per centimeter cube is the relative density of the substance. So now this is the most important part. <clears throat> I know that the dense relative density is equal to density of substance 
अपॉन डेंसिटी ऑफ वॉटर Now the density of water over here is one gram per centimeter cube, and if the density of substance is seven point eight gram per centimeter cube, then automatically gram per centimeter get cancelled. One will be O S O. Accordingly, will be seven point eight only. So that means R D of substance is equal to density of substance in gram per centimeter cube. okay rd of substance is equal to density of substance in gram per centimeter cube so density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube so density of substance in gram per centimeter cube is the relative density of substance since density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube so density of the substance in kg per meter cube is equal to 1000 into relative density so again over here we know that if your water is 1000 so if it is like Seven eight zero zero is the density, or we can see that. Now I know that the relative density is seven point eight. So seven point eight is equal to density of substance upon density of water is thousand. So accordingly, density of substance is equal to density of water. That is relative density. Sorry, relative density into thousand. That will be in kg per meter cube. Got it? So density of substance is equal to thousand into relative density of substance. Specific gravity usually means relative density with respect to water. So whenever I say relative density with respect to water, it can also be said to be as specific gravity of the substance. Okay. Specific gravity of the substance and relative density with respect to water is one and the same thing. Now we move on to density of substances in different states. So let's understand that what will happen to the density of substance when the body changes its state from solid to liquid, liquid to gaseous, and so on. So, okay. So let's see that what will be the changes which will be coming up in the in a particular material when it is changing its state. a substance can exist in three states solid liquid and gas for example ice water and steam are the three states of the same substance water according to molecular model we have read that the molecules of solid are closely packed molecules of liquid are loosely packed while those of gas are very loosely packed therefore the substance is highly dense in solid state less dense in liquid state and still less dense in gaseous state thus the density of substance in solid state is more than in liquid state and the density of substance in liquid state is more than in gaseous state you very well know this thing whenever you are going to have any conversion taking place you know that we need to heat and when you heat the volume increases so that's why what happens any substance like if i take ice and when i'm going to heat it it is going to turn into water when it turns into water it is going to expand when i going to heat water and turn turn into steam it is going to expand further so jitna wo expansion badega volume badega volume badega density kam hoga so that's why the density of the uh, gases will be the least density of liquid will be in between and then the solid will be extremely high so that's why it is this way that the density is going to be from solid to gaseous when i'm increase when when i'm changing the state from solid to liquid and liquid to gas the density will keep on decreasing and when i'm going to condense it from gaseous to liquid and liquid to solid the density is going to keep on increasing of course the ex exception over here will be the anomalous expansion of water so water in between that is between 0 degrees and 4 degrees celsius it is not going to behave the same way it will so happen that wet water from 0 to 4 instead of the density going to be increasing that uh, decrease it is going to uh, the volume the because when i heat the water from 0 to 4 instead of expanding it contracts so the in density increases whereas when i am going uh, to cool from 0 to 4 at that time instead of contracting it expands and that is why the density decreases 
<clears throat> so exception the density of ice is uh, less than water the density of ice is 0 0.917 gram per centimeter cube and that of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube and that of steam is 0 0.00057 gram per centimeter cube so you can see that ice yeah exception over here mainly will be that the normally when i see a solid will have more density than the liquid but here in case of water we know that ice has got a density less than the liquid so ice is a solid which has got density less than its liquid state that is water density of water is one whereas the density of ice is 0 0.917 whereas steam ke baad mein normal hai. steam ka density bahut kam hai that is 0 0.00057 gram per centimeter cube there is a table over here which gives you the density and the relative density in CGS unit, MKS, uh, the SI unit and the uh, relative density. So cork is 0 0.25 that is 250 kg per meter cube, density is 0 0.25. Wood is 0 0.7 gram per centimeter cube that is 700 kg per meter cube, then 0 0.7 density, relative density. Liquids may, water you can see is 1.0 thousand and that is one relative density. Mercury is 13.6 gram per centimeter cube. That is 13,600 kg per meter cube, relative density 13.6. So these are some examples which are given over here. You don't need to learn this by heart. Do not need, there is no need at all to learn by heart these densities cut table, not required at all. Now we see a new thing over here, a new concept and that is floating and sinking. The density of a substance also helps us to determine whether that particular body is going to float in a liquid or it is going to sink in a liquid. A solid will float on a liquid if the density of the solid is less than the density of the liquid. And a solid is going to sink in the liquid if the solid cow density is greater than the density of the liquid. Now, if you see the above table, you can see that the density of water is 1 and the density of cork or wood is 0 0.7 or in fact ice is 0 0.92. That's why we have ice in the water, ice float. Hota hai. Kyu? Because the density of ice is less than that of water. But in case I take an iron piece and put it in, like if I take a small piece of iron and put it inside the water, what will happen? It sinks. Why? Because iron piece, the density is 7.8, where that of the water is 1. So automatically it sinks inside the water. Now, in the same manner, if I take mercury in a liquid and then I put an iron inside, it will not sink. It will float on the mercury. Why? Because the density of mercury is 13.6, where the mercury, then the density of and is only 7.8 so density of mercury being higher the and uh, sorry density of iron being lower than that of mercury that's why the the iron is going to float on mercury so this is how we can see that something can float on a liquid and how the some something can sink inside the liquid if you place a piece of cork and an iron nail in surface of water we notice that the cork floats while nail sinks. This is because the density of cork is less than the density of water, while the density of iron of which the nail is made up of is more than the density of water. Thus, a body floats on a liquid if its density is less than the density of the liquid, while the body sinks in the liquid if the density is more than the density of the liquid. So it is this way, if the density, so If the density of the solid is greater than the density of the liquid, it is going to sink. If the density of solid is less than the density of liquid, then the body is going to float. This is the condition for floating and sinking of an object. If the density of the solid is greater, it sinks. If the density of the solid is less than the density of the liquid, it is going to float on that liquid. Some examples. A solid iron ball with a density 7.86 gram per centimeter cube will sink in liquid which has a density between water which has a density 1 gram per centimeter cube. 
the same iron ball will float in mercury which has the density 13.6 gram per centimeter cube so density of mercury being 13.6 much higher than 7.86 which is the density of iron that's why the density of solid is less than the density of liquid hence the solid floats on the liquid a small cork will float on water because the density of cork is less than the density of water. Whereas a nail, iron nail will sink in water because the density of the iron nail is more than the density of water. This gives us the principle of flotation. When the body is immersed in a liquid, the following two forces act on it. The weight of the body W acting vertically downwards, this force has the tendency to sink the body. The buoyant force of the liquid FB acting vertically upwards, the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the immersed part of the body. This force has a tendency to move the body up. This is why the buoyant force is called as the up thrust. Okay, let's understand this. So in this case, we have got a, suppose we have got a container, the container contains liquid up to this point and we place a body like this. Now, the, the body has got a downward force which is acting over here like this, which is equal to the weight of the body, the W of the body, that is ducting downwards. And at the same time, there is a force which is going upwards, which is pushing the body upwards this is called as the buoyant force or called as so it is called as the buoyant force or it is called as up thrust the upward force up thrust this you can easily have an uh, experience this when you go to a swimming pool and you take the float and you press the float inside the water, what happens to it? As soon as you release it, it bounces back upwards. Why did it bounce back upwards? Because the water gave it an upward force to put it upwards. Similarly, you take a tumbler and put it inside your plastic tumbler, lelo, usko pani ke andar dalo, aisa ulta. Pani bhar ke nahi, aise dal do usko. Aur uske baad daba ke rakho, chhod do. To wo bounce back hoga. So why does it bounce back? It bounces back because of this upward force called as the buoyant force. So any body which is placed inside the liquid, there will be a amount of upward force acting on the body. There will be two forces acting on the body. One is the gravitational force acting downwards, which is the mass of the body. That is the weight of the body. Weight of the body acting downwards. Weight of the body acting downwards. Okay, in each area. So that is the weight of the body acting downwards. And there is a water is giving an upward force that upward force is equal to the volume or the mass of the liquid displaced by the body. Is k volume ke jitana volume ka pani baat nikla. Suppose this is 100 ml. Okay. So 100 ml ke against jitana liquid baat nikla. Or uska jo mass rahega. Okay. The 100 ml. If this is going to displace 100 ml of water. So 100 ml of water weighs 100 grams. So the up thrust on this will be 100 grams. Now, if the body over here, this body is of 90 grams, then what will happen? The 100 grams is upwards, 90 grams is downwards. So it will start floating on the body. So this body will start floating. Now, if the body of mass is 200 grams, then what happens? Niche is a force 100 grams. Ka hai. Upar se niche jane wala force 200 grams. Ka hai. Is liye sink karega. Right. So what we have is the three conditions. We have got if W is there, if W is greater than FB, the body is going to sink. If W is equal to or W is less than FB, the body is going to float. Got it? Now when the body is going to, so it is this way. In this condition, so if this is the condition, then this thing is going to sink and reach here down. Okay, it will not be here. 
is going to breach here down. That is the first condition. In this condition, the second condition, the body will be such that the body will be completely immersed. Yani ek dam top pe is tarah se rahega. This is the condition of the body. That means it is completely submerged in the body, but it is floating. It is not sinking downwards. It is just floating on the top. Okay. So in such a case, W is equal to F B. And the third condition is when it is floating, fully floating. Yani kya? Ki container hai. आधा बॉडी अंदर आधा ऊपर आधा या मे बी वन थर्ड पार्टली इट इज इन साइड द वॉटर पार्टली इट इज आउट साइड द वॉटर वेन विल दैट हैपन वेन माई डब्ल्यू इज लेस देन द अपर्ड फोर्स इफ द अपर्ड फोर्स इज मोर देन द वेट ऑफ द बॉडी देन इट इज गोइंग टू बी पार्टली इन साइड एंड पार्टली आउट साइड लाइक इन द शिप शिप इज पार्टली इन साइड द वॉटर पार्टली अब द वॉटर okay so that is how it is going to be there so ship is like this right whereas submarine is like this uske baad wo niche bhi ja sakta hai so we see over here that the weight of the body w is greater than the buoyant force fb in this case the resultant force of the body is w minus fb which x downwards the body will sink in the liquid to the bottom and under the influence of the resultant force w minus fb This is shown in Figure two point seven. This happens when the density of solid is greater than the density of liquid. So, in this condition, the density of solid is greater than the density of sorry, d of solid is greater than the density of liquid. In this case, the density is equal to density of solid equal to density of liquid, and here density of solid is density of liquid less than density of liquid. Second condition: the weight of the body W is equal to the buoyant force. In this case, the resultant force on the body is zero. The apparent weight of the body is zero. So any floating body, when you take, when you take any floating body, uska mass apne aap zero ho jata hai. Kyu? Because the weight which is going downwards is W, and the weight which is going upwards, that the W which is going upwards is The same as W because they are equal. So what are what is the resultant thing? Resultant thing is zero. So all floating bodies' ka mass kitna hota hai zero, and that is the reason when you go into a swimming pool, you can even carry your father in the swimming pool. In the in a swimming pool, you can easily carry him. Why do you carry? Why you able to carry him? Why? Because in water, the upthrust is helping you to. बट जैसे ही हम लोग पानी के ऊपर लेके जाएंगे तो नहीं वो पॉसिबल नहीं है पानी के अंदर यू कैन ऑलवेज पुल हिम आप पुश हिम डाउन कुछ भी कर सकते हैं पानी के अंदर कर सकते हैं व्हाई बिकॉज इज वेट इज निग्लेजिबल ऑन वाटर सो दैट इज द एपरेंट वेट ऑफ द बॉडी इज जीरो द बॉडी विल फ्लो जस्ट इन द सर्फेस ऑफ द लिक्विड दिस इज शोन इन फिगर टू दिस हैपन्स वेन द डेंसिटी ऑफ सॉलिड इज इक्वल टू डेंसिटी ऑफ लिक्विड डेंसिटी ऑफ वॉलेट इक्वल टू डेंसिटी ऑफ लिक्विड This is the condition where the net resultant weight. So in this case, the net weight of the body was this was W minus. So net weight over here in this case. Okay, write it in a net weight is W minus F B in this case. Here the net weight net weight is equal to this much. Here the net weight is equal to zero because W minus F B is zero. Here also the net weight will be zero. third case is the weight of the body w is less than the buoyant force in this case the resultant force act on the body upwards the body will float partially above the surface only to match only as that much portion of the body will immerse inside the liquid by which the weight of the liquid displays fb balances the total weight of the body see in this case this is slightly tricky Okay, let's understand this in a proper manner. <clears throat> I told you that the body which is inside, okay, but as a, as soon as you put inside, it will be such that the F B will be equal to the mass or weight of liquid displaced. By body. What is the upthrust? 
वेट ऑफ द लिक्विड डिस्प्लेस यानी क्या अगर ये इतना पानी है तो इतना कंटेंट ऑफ द पानी जो बाहर निकला रहेगा और जितना राइज हुआ रहेगा सो दिस मच कंटेंट ऑफ वाटर विच इज डिस्प्लेस बाय द सॉलिड उसका वेट इज द अपथ्रस्ट सो वी नो दैट द वेट विच इज एक्टिंग डाउनवर्ड इज डब्ल्यू Now, if the date FB over here, which is going acting upwards, if FB is greater, then what should happen? The body should fly in the air. Yes. If the weight, which is the force, which is giving upward force, if the upward force is greater than the downward force, then what would what should happen? It should fly in the air. But can it fly in the air? Of course not. So what happens? It will allow only that much amount of liquid. to be displaced which is equal to w yani kya hoga always here w will be equal to fb or fb will be equal to w the fb fb will be such that the upward force will be made or upward force will be calculated in such a way upward force will automatically come in such a way that only partially the body body will be inside the water and partial will be above the water the one which is inside the water will give enough amount of force to equalize the weight of the body okay the upthrust will be enough to equalize the weight of the body so that the body is in equilibrium so that the body is stable it can remain on the surface of water without neither sinking nor flying upwards so when this condition is achieved when, how is it achieved that it is allowing only certain part of the body to sink inside the water and certain part to remain above the water so this is how we see that the body will float partially about the surface of what liquid only that much portion of the liquid now this is what is written in italic so this is important only that much portion of the body will immerse inside the liquid by which the weight of the liquid displaced fb by which the weight of the liquid displaced that is fb balances the total weight of the body ओके एफबी बैलेंस इज द टोटल वेट ऑफ द बॉडी जब उतना हो जाएगा तो अब वो अपने आप सिंक होने का बंद होगा उतना ही सबमर्ज होगा उतना ही पानी के अंदर जाएगा दिस इज शोन इन फिगर 2.9 दिस हैपेंस व्हेन द डेंसिटी ऑफ सॉलिड इज लेस देन द डेंसिटी ऑफ लिक्विड नाउ व्हाइल फ्लोटिंग एफबी विल बी गो टू डब्ल्यू सो अपरेंट वेट इज जीरो सो एट दिस केस एंड दिस कंडीशन आल्सो द टोटल वेट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर बॉडी हाउएवर बिग इट इज the total weight will be zero because it is a floating body a floating body ka net weight will be zero thus a body of density greater than the liquid of den the density of liquid sinks inside the liquid while the body of density equal or less than the density of liquid floats on the liquid so dependence of solid dependence of the solid and liquid on this density of the uh, floating or sinking of liquid can be understood by the following example so that is not required because that is quite a uh, example which is not required the activity is not required because you are not calculating anything specific so this is about the uh, flotation and uh, the principle of flotation now we see the law of flotation in the next video